All right, I kind of feel like Disney or Lucasfilm or somebody should pay us some royalties or give us credit or something. Why, did something new happen with Turbis? No. No, it's, it's because of today's Bad Batch episode. Um, I'm, I'm confused. Yeah, I don't think we're following. Could you give us something a little more? <laughs> well, that's because you guys aren't up at sunrise like me. Those scenes today were mirror images of what I see on our back patio every single morning. So you're saying it, it kind of bugged you? Oh. Okay, why is he not allowed to make dad jokes? Exactly. I mean, I, I've, I've taken out the, the dad jokes at the beginning. Anyway, on that note, we'll start the show after these ads specifically chosen because they include a hypersonic frequency proven to repel mosquitoes for up to three miles. Wish. <laughs> if only. <laughs> there's, there's YouTube videos that claim that. This is Tatooine Sons. A shoot to Star Wars, Marvel, DC, and Invincible. Invincible? I don't know if there are any Invincible shirts on the site. Oh, yeah. You should. You anyway, should. Think, yeah. Mark. Um, anyway. Dad has not gotten spoiled on oh, okay. anything. Right. Okay. 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 Anyway. Um, thanks for listening to the show. If you want to get some really cool merch, uh, including maybe we'll throw on an Invincible shirt in there uh, in our store, go to our show notes, and there is a link to our Tee Public store where you can find all sorts of cool stuff. T-shirts, mugs, phone cases, throw pillows. Whatever. And um, if you use our link, whatever you buy, 100% of the proceeds will go to help a child living in extreme poverty through one child. So you get some really cool pop culture swag and you get to help a kid along the way. Do it. It's true. It's true. All of it. What is the name of the Porg on the Millennium Falcon? Force is strong in my family. What do you think his name is? <laughs> it's a big moment. I am a Jedi, like my father before me. Maybe Turbis? Do or do not. There is no try. Turbis? <laughs> Pablo, if you're listening to this live stream... That Porg's name is now Turbis. It's a good Star Wars name. We're not done yet. These guys record an awesome podcast called Tatooine Sons. Everybody was late. I finished the first compendium of... Yeah, no, we talked about that, but I mean, like, are you, like, are you ordering the other ones? I'm not sure. I'm planning on it at some point, but... Did you ask for for them I did. I'm I'm hoping to get them. Trust me, you're not getting, like, a $70 comic book for your birthday from us. Yeah, I don't... No, I'm kidding. Um... (laughs) Anyway, okay, welcome All to right. the Sons of Pop Culture Podcast. We believe that pop culture is the mythology of this generation, that there is a story, it is written on our souls, and that these myths speak to that story, and that is why we talk about Star Wars and Marvel and DC and Lord of the Rings and Invincible and uh, a bunch of other things. I am David. I am the dad. Hi, dad. Hi, dad. What's up? I'm joined by a couple of really awesome sons, one of whom will have a birthday soon and will be able to get his, uh, we'll get something for his birthday. Uh, It's a couple weeks out. Sam, how are you today? I'm tired, but good. Yeah, you were going to talk Lord of the Rings, but then Marvel messed everything up. Yeah, they tend to do that. They uh, released. I've been talking Marvel for (laughs) months now, but yeah, they, um, Marvel's studios assembled their episode on Loki came out and figured we'll talk about that might as well do that and bb nate are we are we talking batman who laughs again of course we're going to be talking about probably my favorite issue um well we're getting to the last uh, kind of arc of this mini series and it's, it's really where it starts to get really good so i'm excited about it that's cool dad yeah, do you have anything yeah what you got not really um did you guys see that episode with me today <laughs> so, no i mean yeah i mean it's the bad batch i'm um we'll, we'll talk about it that was something um with that but before we do that we just uh before the show we we watched finally it's been out for a couple days i think i watched yeah, it a little bit like 40 minutes after it came out did you so did. we watched the dune trailer mm-hmm now, Dune has like real Star Wars vibes. Yeah, I got very Star Wars. It's vibes been from pretty it. much acknowledged that George Lucas stole some ideas <laughs> from Dune. <laughs> Spice, I mean, uh, oh come, come on. on, with that. And then, of course, you've got Poe Dameron in it. Yeah, right. as an older Poe Dameron. Is that yeah. is that what is this a Star Wars movie? It, it, I think it, it is. Be. It's like it's like you know another thirty years in the future. Technology yeah, something is really like that. advanced or something. Yeah. What did you guys think about the trailer? So maybe Nate, you saw it a couple days I ago. I did, and this trailer actually made me interested in the movie for like the first time. 
So yeah, wasn't the first one he just stuck his hand in a box or something? I don't remember what the first weird. one was. I think it was more than that. But it just I don't even know if I it, watched the first one. It so. didn't entice me, mm-hmm. but this one looks really good. I'm excited about it. And I right as I watched it, I'm like, this looks like it's going to be a very long movie. So. Yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah, I get the vibe no. that it's going to be long, but it looks really, really good. I very look really epic. Yes. yes, very epic. Which is what it looks like. Almost a cross between something Lord of the Rings and Star Wars. Just like that that grand story feel, but in a sci-fi setting with like the large and the, themes and the large ground battles. And it looks really good. Personally, I have a lot of faith in this director because I enjoyed Arrival. Y'all didn't. But oh, he did it Arrival. Was different. It was different. I see that yeah. a little bit now. Yeah. Okay. Well, cool. Um, I'm excited. That comes out in October. Um yeah, yeah, I think that's what it said. October. That's cool. Awesome. <laughs> Sam, you'll be in the midst of uh, taking five classes, but before that, you got to you got to pass calculus two. Yes, that's this week. Mm-hmm. The finals coming up. Yeah, near in the end here. You've got what's your grade in the class right now? Brag right on, now, brag on. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you brag on yourself so I can brag on right you. Right now, before I take this final test or this third test, is a ninety nine point seven. What? That is ridiculous. I know. How did Shame. you? How, how, how can you live with yourself by having a ninety nine? It is kind of bugging me that it's point three off. But yeah, yeah. So, so I'm a little nervous about finishing off. But I think so I'll you be got okay. finals. Uh, got you a- got a test on Monday, mm-hmm. and then final by the end of the week by Thursday. By mm-hmm. Thursday, and then you're done for a couple weeks. Yep. three four weeks till. The fall. Mm-hmm. When does fall start? Do you know? It's sometime August seventeenth. I think. Yeah. So it's just a couple of weeks. Mm. In the meantime, BB Nate will have a birthday. Happy well, birthday! He'll Thank have you. his sweet sixteen. Uh, <laughs> That'll be cool. And um, <laughs> before that, we're going to Disney. We World. are uh, do some galaxy edging. Uh, the whole thing, yeah. right? Uh, Savannah yeah. Savvy's going to come mm-hmm. with us. Um, that'll be fun. We've got a, a Airbnb. We're going to crash in for a few days and take advantage of the last week of our annual pass and and see it all. And and we'll you know, God willing, hold on. Can I knock knock on this thing? I uh, know you can knock knock on this thing though. Don't you need to knock on wood though? Not Isn't well. It wood? Oh, wait, I'm wait. Trying to, I'm, it's I'll, this I'll is audio. I'll this is audio. Oh. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. Knock, knock. Uh, knock on wood. Anyway, uh, hopefully the, the mask uh, restrictions will still be lifted um, by then. Hopefully. Curse you, August, COVID Delta variant. August in Orlando is something else. And Especially putting a mask masks. on makes it a thousand times but, um, but we got the water parks, too. Yeah. Hopefully. So. Fast Pass is back up. They just uncovered all, most, if not all. Yeah, the that'll help. We'll things. see. So, what that means for you listening is that there will be no Tatooine Sons episode on August sixth. We try not to take breaks. Sometimes we've had to, but this one's one of those. I'm just not going to try to figure out how we're going to get an episode in uh, that week. We don't have any Marvel coming out that week. We do have the Bad Batch, but we'll just, you know, maybe they'll have an episode like this week and it won't matter, um, for us to talk about it. Oh, uh, man, on that note, we've been dark side it, stuff it coming is. from you maybe, this week. Maybe I didn't that lack of sleep last yeah. night coming out in the show here. We've been known to throw around the term filler episode as a joke before on this show, but this latest episode of the Bad Batch has us wondering if the joke's on us. Well, that was a good line. That was good. You like that? Mm-hmm. Pokey religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good blaster at your side, kid. Rebellions are built on hope. The Force is with me, and I am with the Force. If you live long enough, you see the same eyes in different people. I sent them to dad, but they just released an announced gentle giant is what we're talking about. Right, right. Deluxe mini bust of the Vader from the end of Twilight Apprentice from Rebels. Twilight of the Apprentice. The so he has the whole mask. broken mask thing. It looks amazing. And so I got Kanan. They have blind Kanan. You can have the mask on or you can or have it off, off with the, with the, the eyes. Yeah, don't look at scarring. it now. We'll look at it later. So, oh, yeah. It's that's so awesome. good. General Giant has some really cool stuff. Yeah, they give us those porgs. Yeah, uh, they did. That are right behind you, BB Samuel the Hat. Yeah. So. BB, <laughs> BB, uh, the BB Sam. BB the Sam. Um... <laughs> Let's talk about the Bad Batch episode 13, Infested. I think I've given my initial reaction already, so I'm going to let you guys give yours. Let's start with you, Nathan. What did you think about this episode? It was fun. <laughs> it was interesting. It was interesting. Fun. No, but yeah, I mean, that's really the the praise that you can give it is it was a fun episode. 
And I think that we don't need to be able to be like all frustrated that nothing happened. And I know I've been one that's like, we don't have a purpose for this show yet. And that's been my thing throughout this whole series. But I'm going back to thinking of the first season of Rebels and we had these types of episodes all the time. So basically, BB Nate is just trying to to provide some therapy for me. Um, I'm just saying Rebels has become our favorite animated series. It has, absolutely. Yet season one is a a has, chore to get through. It, it can be. Okay. So I'm all, right. Just all right. All right. All right. Mm-hmm. Sam, what do you think about this episode? I got to agree with Nathan. I, I thought the same thing. It was a really fun episode. The whole heist, you know, and the bugs and all that. It was a lot of fun. But nothing substantial really happened. And normally I'd be okay with that. I don't mind that kind of episode. But we're getting a little too close to the end of this series for them to be throwing around these kinds well, of Well, we don't know that it's the end of the series. It may just be okay. the end of the season well, one. They have not announced a season two yet. That's what's They didn't announce out. a season two for Loki until the final episode. I agree. Fair enough. I agree. So I'm just a little worried that they're not going to go anywhere with this. They've got, what, three episodes left now? And they've got to either really put things into another gear or start announcing a second season or something. Because it's kind of, I mean, I hate to to do this, but it almost feels like resistance to an extent. Just kind of like there's no bearing to anything at the moment. It's just its own little thing at the moment. So I know that's pretty dark side. But and that's I mean, just we don't usually do that, but no. let's, you know, we want to be honest Again, about it. Again, so. I mean, you look, of course, hindsight is 2020. And so we're looking at Rebels now as what it is now. That's if fair. you go back to season one, we didn't pick it up because it wasn't. It didn't seem something interesting. When you go with Resistance, the first season wasn't interesting. The first season of Rebels isn't that interesting. Nothing happened. I think the first season of Resistance was the best season. I exactly. Think it, I think it built all the way through to the end there. Those last few episodes that match up with the Force Awakens mm-hmm. and and all of that. I thought that was fantastic. I think that they just gave up on it in the second season. Exactly. But I, I don't want them to give up on this. I think right. there's 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 a there's the core i guess the way i would describe it is like the bones of something really really cool here that but they i I felt like this was i feel like this series is two steps forward one step back um in a lot of cases and i want them to kind of move things forward i do understand what you're saying about rebels and there are some similarities to that clone Wars season one was the same way as well let's hope that um that this this works out let's talk a little bit about the episode though we went back to ord mantel we start out with a conversation that seems to suggest that the Bad Batch has actually been working for Sid again for some time. They're yeah. they're doing uh, these deals, time you know, the, these um, different Job. missions mm-hmm. or whatever for them. We had hoped, maybe even expected, that the events of the past few episodes would drive the Bad Batch towards some greater purpose. Kind of like what you were talking about a second ago, mm-hmm. BB Nate. Um, it doesn't seem like that has happened. Um, with the characters at all. Sam, did the, do you feel like the series, you know, I mentioned that two steps forward, one step back. Do you feel like the series took a step back in this episode? Yeah, I did. I was expecting, well, at first I thought they were talking, you know, negatively about their last mission as the last thing they were just doing. That's why they needed extra payment. Then, you know, through more conversation, we learned that it was something new and that was kind of disappointing. I thought, oh, maybe they're going to decide to do something new here, but then it, it, we learned it was a whole new mission. They're back in the normal swing of things. You'd think that's, I mean, are they just going to be like mercenaries forever? Like I thought Hunter was really getting some, or was really starting to see some things and have some, um, uh, conflictions or that's not a word, but conflict, you know, conflict, right. Mm-hmm. But it seems like nothing's changed. Okay. Nathan, do you, uh, what's the series about? You've talked about it. You're, it's they're, they're looking for their purpose. If you could try to figure out right now, describe for us the purpose of the Bad Batch, the purpose of the series, what would you come up with at this point? I don't know. I think it's a purpose of kind of just gently... It, right now, what I'm thinking is it's gently letting the Clone Wars fans out of rest. Because, I mean, everybody wanted Season 7 of Clone Wars, and they got it. And, of course, they requested more. So they got more. They got Bad Batch. And it kind of starting to feel like it's gently letting them down, you know, okay, mm. Clone Wars is starting to get over and transitioning into kind of a Rebels kind of territory. You know, Rebels is the next part in this chronological story. So go watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it feels almost like at this point for me, I'm wondering 
if they don't know what they're trying, what they want to do with the Bad Batch, what with the characters, mm. it does, it's Dave Filoni. He knows. I, I know mm-hmm. that, and I want, I want to, to believe that, and we'll talk about that a little. When bit have you more. been let down by Dave? I have. Filoni? I've never. I, listen, I understand, but I think that I need to be. I think we, as fans, we should be honest at this point, and I am, and be like the Bad Batch. It's like they're in this spot in the story where where they don't know what to do with them, right? And you you can't bring in you know unless it's bring in a a, a cameo, a, a Hera, a Cad Bane, a Fennec, they don't really know what to do with the characters, right? Yeah, with it, and so they just send them on another mercenary job, another, and that's that's I want them to you know I thought that it was going to be Omega was captured by Cad Bane, okay, now we have a direction, uh, uh that didn't happen. Now Hera. Uh, you know, they, they experience what happens on Ryloth. They experience what happens on Raxus. The clones rebel. The, 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 now the clones are going to rebel or they're going to move the story forward. And that's just now we're just back to working for Sid again. And um, it was a little bit a little bit. I don't know. It it it, it, it wasn't a bad episode. No. It wasn't a bad episode. It had a great story. It was fun that. to watch. It, you know, you guys have all said that characters were fine. All of that. It wasn't a bad episode, but it's it in the light of the greater story right now. It just feels like they. It feels to me like they don't know what they're trying to do um, with the show. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Sid though, because that's where we where we pick up in the story. In this, uh, you know, they they come back to the cantina. After this mission, the Bad Batch then learns that Sid's been forced out um, and that a Deveronian criminal, his name is Roland Durand. Durand Durand? Durand Durand, no. Um, <laughs> has taken over uh, the cantina. The Bad Batch then goes and they they track down Sid or maybe she tracks them down. I think it felt like more like she was looking for them yeah. um, at that point. And there here we go again. She blackmails the, back bat, the Bad Batch into helping her steal a few crates of spice that Roland has in the office um, that is awaiting pick up from the Pike Syndicate. Um, Nathan. Ma. Yep. Uh, Sid seems uh, to be using the same card every single episode that we see her in. Obviously, um, the Bad Batch, they came to her aid again this week. You know, they, she's blackmailing them. She's got information about them. You have to do the job for me. They come through. Sid has her bar back again. When will Sid accept that they're finally, they, they, they've, they've, you know, become... They've they've resolved this and they're even again. I think it's just when the Bad Batch decides to leave. I think that just Sid is milking this and is milking their kind of just their naivete of this world. Like, okay, they're just going to keep coming back. I'll put them on jobs and give them a cut right, of it. She's going to use them exactly. as long as she can. And if they leave, they leave. What is she going to do? She, I mean, she couldn't stand up to this guy who just walked in and took her bar. And they can't. She can't stand up against the Bad Batch. So she'll just let him well, go. She could blackmail the Bad Batch. That's the whole, the whole point here. But I, I think you're right, Nate. I think once the Bad Batch decides, like, for a good cause or whatever, that they're going to Go fight the good fight. I think Sid's a businesswoman, right? She's she's she knows how to make money. She knows what use, to use them for. But I also feel like she's kind of good in there at some point. So, or, or uh, to some extent. So, I think if the Bad Batch leaves for the right reason, she'll understand. Okay, Sam, let's do a thought exercise together here. Oh, those are fun. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, let's assume that Roland Durand is like the Purgles. I get that vibe. of this series. All right. And that this episode is the Purgle episode. Yes. Because we, because moment of transparency, we weren't recording a podcast when the Purgle episode came out. Nope. I promise you, if we were recording an episode when the Purgle episode, or recording the show when the Purgle episode came out, we'd if probably you. be having the same conversation about yep. the Purgles. Yep. Okay. Um, so let's, let's say Roland is the Purgles of the Bad Batch. How can he play into the future of this series? I, I actually thought. Um, at the end there, when he got his horn cut off, I'm like, he could become a member of the Bad Batch. Now, think about the whole Bad Batch group. They're all misfits, outcasts, you know, this this Daveronian, he's all, you know, disfigured at this point. He's an outcast. He's failed. He could fit in with the Bad Batch. Sid's kind of an outcast. I mean, it all works. So, I feel like they could totally... So, the Bad Batch is the island of misfit toys. Basically. Uh, in Star Wars. Basically. Okay. Um. So, I feel like... 
Like even their droid last week is a is a gonk droid that can't even fully charge, but they still use him. But anyway, I think he could come back in some way, assuming they make a season two. I feel like this series, like you're saying, they are more becoming more and more convinced that this needs to be a more than one season series. It's got to continue somehow. And I think if that's the case, then um, what do we say, Duran Roland? Um, he could definitely come back and play. He's part of a, a seemingly pretty major crime family, right? Yeah. That could come into play pretty significantly with the Bad Batch if they needed some help. So okay. I think he could potentially be pretty important. Uh, let's talk about the spice, uh, spice runners and spice. we're talking about Dune now. What even again. is spice though? Spice it's is a drug. drug. I know that, but like, what is it? Well, it's a drug. Mm-hmm. It looks like it was kind of like cocaine packs. Just say no. Okay. Uh, (laughs) Hugs, not drugs. Yeah, that's right. The rest of the episodes, basically (laughs) uh, the Bad Batch and Sid sneaking into the cantina through some underground tunnels to steal the spice. Things go badly. They get dropped into a giant abyss. Um, The spice does. A bunch of the alien bugs, they swarm everywhere. Uh, Bad Batch and Sid get out of the tunnels. They casually walk into the cantina, which was a little weird to me. Um, Just as the pikes are threatening Durand, the Pikes make the Bad Batch promise to recover the spice and take Omega as collateral. Um, the Bad Batch goes back to the tunnels. They have more bugs. They get the spice out. Omega is free. Duran gets his tech one makes off. like one heck of a flashbang. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that was that was a cool moment. Um, I'm trying to figure out why the uh, Sam, why the Pike uh, syndicates, uh, why that group needs to be in this episode. Um, does it signal a larger story uh, that's coming? Maybe something involving the Martez sisters. I don't know. Maybe they're trying to bring in a whole crime syndicate uh, storyline going on. Um, They've touched on it a little bit here and there with different things. Uh, Obviously, Solo, a pretty good amount in Clone Wars. I don't really think there was much in Rebels. Uh, But there's that, you know, there's Maul at the end of uh, Solo. There's still a story there we need to know that's probably taking place right about now. Perhaps they're setting this up to where... What do you mean taking place right now? This is like 10 years before Solo. Right. Well, I'm saying he's got to learn how to become... He's got to become the head of Crimson Dawn somehow. Okay. Well, okay. Well, he's... Uh, go ahead. Can it. we just address the fact that we all agree this is Clone Wars Season 8? Right? At this point, it feels like it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can we all address the fact that they mentioned Maul and the crime syndicates and everything in season seven that's true are we just gonna assume that this is gonna be able to give right, them all okay, so then that's where i'm is that where from. we're going with this bb nate are we going to see the pikes bring in other crime organizations maybe the beginning of crimson dawn yeah. but pikes were a part of the shadow collective they pulled out of the shadow collective during the clone wars maul was running the shadow collective he's not anymore but he wants to regroup it seems like is that where this is is that where the series is going are they gonna is the salvation of this show going to have to be bringing in darth maul I feel like, like it. every animated show. Well, the thing is, is when you think point. of Clone Wars, you kind of think of Ahsoka and Maul. I mean, that's really who, who Clone Wars is about. So I think that bringing in Maul to this wouldn't feel out of place, especially with the Bad Batch just going around doing mercenary work. It would work. So I think it's a high likelihood that we'll be seeing it. Yeah, and I, I don't think anybody would mind that. But like I said, it feels like every show's almost not necessarily crutch, but almost their crutches throwing mall and it'll work. It happened with rebels. I mean, it worked. It was awesome. Well, it happened with clone wars. It they ha- resurrected right. mall. Right. And then they bring, bring it in in rebels, which really, I am things up. Nobody's complaining about either of those, those points. No, I love both and of them. Nobody, and if they bring mall in here, we're going to have a whole episode where we do nothing but like scream into out. our microphones yeah. about how awesome it was to have mall back in. I'm not saying that that's not, you know, that we're not going to do that. What I'm saying is, is that where this show has to go in order to, in order to, to pick back up? Or they could bring in Boba. In fact, they could do all of this all at once and it would be pretty cool, but. I don't, so do I we don't get know. a confrontation between Boba and Maul? That would be interesting. I think... Huh, I don't know. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. That I, would I wouldn't be pretty mind. cool. There's a lot. They, 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 if they go the crime syndicate route, there's a lot they could work with, I think. They just need to pick a direction and go with it at this yeah. point. I think this is, is... Yeah. Yep. Okay. Final takeaways of this episode. Sam, where are we going <laughs> from here? I, I mean... <sighs> Basically, what I said, I think the bad they need to just pick a path for the show, a direction, and go there. They've got the great bones, like you've said. 
It's a great story. That all the episodes are fun. They just need to go somewhere with it. Um, and no crosshair, even though he's supposedly hunting them and stuff. So it's they just got to go somewhere with the show. I guess yeah. Nate. Yeah, I think that the next few episodes are going to be really important in kind of where does this series fit with Star Wars? Mm -hmm. I think that's going to be important. I think that Dave Filoni knows what he's doing, so I have hope for another week. So we'll just see. You know that meme that we see on Facebook and stuff all the time about that, like, figure with a stick poking at something yeah saying, come do on something. do something yeah. i saw somebody take that and put the bad, the bad batch batch logo. On it. come on and do they're something. like come on do something it kind of is that's where i'm at yeah, right now I with mean, this. yeah yeah overall this i mean the episode to me it feels like it stalled out the series um honestly we were talking about it bb nate when you and i were going um i'm running an errand earlier today it could have been inserted almost anywhere in the series after the bad batch started working for sid and it wouldn't have felt any different yep yeah, I mean, uh, there was no... Literally, you could go in and take episode 13, put it at episode 10 or episode 9, and it would have fit just fine, and it would have been the same story Yep. Um, with it. As far as Star Wars goes, we know this. In Filoni, we trust. Um, but that's only because we've seen things like the Purgles save the galaxy in Rebels. Um, so let's hope that <laughs> the, the uh, last three episodes of the season give us that hope type of resolution Mm -hmm. i'm hoping for that so yeah so uh marvel studios assembled loki episode uh was released and it gave us a lot of fun and interesting insights into the making of the absolutely amazing series uh including something about an alligator named wally we'll talk about it all in a little bit Wow. Different Wally. Yeah. And that's coming up after these episodes or these ads. That's right. These episodes? I got, I got ads in my head, or episodes in the brain. After these ads specifically chosen to prepare you for our discussion about the best episode of Marvel Studios oh, easy. assembled so far. Mm, definitely. Easy. Uh, this is Tattooing Sons. Hey, y'all. What's it's, up? It's, uh, you uh, hey, y'all. With the hey, y'all. Thing. Uh, that, hey, y'all. We're not good with that yet. Um, so. It's review time. Yeah. Yeah, if we had any reviews. I know. What's Come on. Oh. It hurts. Please. It hurts right here. Yeah. All right. Yeah. BB Nate, explain why reviews are so important. Reviews are important because they help us still do this podcast just, you know, emotionally and mentally. <laughs> um, but they also help drive discoverability for other people because if you leave a review, sometimes it can help people find the show better. So reviews are very important on that end. And also, if you make, if you give us a review on a show or an episode on Podchaser. On Podchaser at Correct, yeah. you know Podchaser.com, look up Tatooine Sons. If you give us a review, we will make a donation in your honor to One Child. So it's pretty cool and it helps people find the show and, and it one child doesn't mean morale. like a single child. Yes. I mean we're talking about an organization called One Child Maybe, that helps yes. kids in poverty. Yes. More than one. Well more than one child. More than yes. one. Yes. Yeah. One but child. We're trying to end poverty one child at a time. Think of it that uh, way. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So help us out. Thanks. Be on your guard. There are older and fouler things than orcs in the deep places of the world. All right, then. Keep your secrets. Parts of the TVA, like the whole turnstile thing, where it was like really busy. Oh, like, yeah, I did see that. There was a little rocket raccoon very in, in there. That's cool. People, I, people are like, I wonder what that reaction, or that interaction would have been like. Oh, that would have been awesome. Loki they should have had that in there. That's a deleted scene I want. So, right, right. So, uh, yeah, Assembled came out, and uh, there was a lot of really interesting little insights and, and tidbits they released. One was um, the, the director talked about how, or excuse me, the, the head writer talked about how people compared Loki to Doctor Who and Legends of Tomorrow when t- what, what, okay what's wrong with Legends of Tomorrow Nate? it's it I've watched two episodes and that was more the, than enough the hardest two episodes of a TV show I have ever had even to worse watch. So this, this was not a bad batch no I'm just kidding I'm kidding I'm kidding I'm so, kidding <laughs> so everything was horribly confusing 
I looked up what I needed to know before those episodes because it was in the middle of the series, but I knew the characters. So is it part of this Crisis on Infinite Earths thing? It was. So you had it to was see some of them. It or? was a part of the beginning, the prep for it. Okay. Okay. But I was watching it. It made no sense. There was big teddy bears. There was it just. It was so horribly okay. weird. Okay, so how it was not a good comparison. What, why are we talking about Loki or that with Loki? Help me understand. Yeah, I'm not sure where the comparisons come from. So I was hoping a Nate lot of different that. types of they they go to different multiverses and find different uh, okay. people. So okay. that's there we the go. And then Doctor Who makes obviously sense. lots of time travel yeah. with the doctors and stuff. So um, the, the writer Michael uh, Waldron he wanted to really subvert people's expectations. Uh, he said I think a lot of people were expecting it to be like Quantum Leap with Loki um, you know writing beside Paul Revere and influencing like historical events and stuff. So in like their first writing meeting he's like let's blow up what people think this show is. Well it started though with D.B. Cooper. Right. So it kind of was like that was it. Right, right. We, we thought that that was later on not some prank that he was in but when Loki was first announced and we got you know our first looks at it what did you guys think the show was going to be about and, and what was it going to be when like? I first watched it I I had no idea I haven't seen Quantum Leap myself I don't think any of us have Dad, have. oh yeah have? man I used to watch that all the time yeah in I the never 80s saw that stuff. Um, but Definitely. I, Scott Bakula? The heck yeah. I watch that all the time. Best but, one was when he was like, he, he he jumped into Lee Harvey Oswald's body and was trying and like, if he mess, if he doesn't assassinate John F. Kennedy, then the whole timeline gets messed up. And he's got this like, that was a great episode. That's actually kind of interesting. It was. Anyway, so. Uh, well, I didn't know what it was. I thought it was a crime thriller there for a little bit. And it kind of was, but it never really turned out to be as much of a crime thriller as I thought. I really, when I first saw the trailer, I had no idea what to expect. It was so horribly strange. I just knew I was looking forward to it. And, yeah, I, I would, wasn't familiar enough with the TVA, um, and I didn't know anything about Mobius or Renslayer, so all of that was sort of uh, was was a blank page for me, um, which allowed mm. me to to watch it. I I just knew that Loki was a really interesting, fun um, um, character that. I wasn't. I, I really didn't know where they could go with them, mm. uh, with it, and they, they blew my mind. So yeah. anyway, um, I think I know the answer to this. But do you guys like the direction they went with? Absolutely. And, and would you have done anything a little bit differently? No, I don't no? think so. I think that. Well, we have no idea what could have been That's done fair. differently, That's fair. unless we went to a different timeline. But we know yeah. how bad that would make things. So no, I don't think we really. I have no kind of changes of direction mm-hmm. i would have preferred so yeah i loved i loved what they did with loki um there were some things i would a little moments or things that i would have done a little differently mm-hmm. but overall it was a great series yeah I agree. so far i so. i think it was good they didn't go with a quantum leap or something it was time travel but again not in a way we've ever seen in anything before marvel's pretty consistent with that um and so we also got a little bit more information on on tom hiddleston and stuff with uh the show they actually pr- started production on loki on his birthday uh, a few years ago, and he was given a, a Tesseract cake, which I think which looks is, cool. It was cool. We should ask, ask mom to make one of those for some time. <laughs> you know, it's probably not too difficult. You just have to make it's just a cube. square cakes and then frost it. Fondant or whatever. More frost, anyway, right? you can do uh, she's watching enough baking shows. She'll know how to do it. Um, we learned that this is kind of a little surprising. We learned that Tom originally auditioned to play Thor, and for some reason he did so with an American accent, but <laughs> <laughs> like... Nobody's sure why, but he was later called back, but obviously not to play Thor, but Loki as we know him now. What did you guys think when you saw Tom in a blonde wig wielding I've Molnir? seen that audition tape before. Okay. And I always thought it was horribly weird. It did not work. It probably would work if, I, if he actually did right. become Thor. But I just can't imagine anybody else but Chris Hemsworth being Thor now. Or at least not Tom Hiddleston. Like, <laughs> yeah, but a skinny I, dude. But I couldn't imagine Chris Hemsworth being like Loki or something like that. Uh, that's but true. it would be uh, well. First of all, I thought it was a joke when I when it started on screen. I thought they were gonna ah. like they were gonna like reveal that it was like f- something funny, like they right, did with like Owen, a, like, a spook. like they did with Owen Wilson's. You know, right? Uh, he not was called. To, yeah, yeah, I couldn't yeah, do yeah. Thor. I couldn't do you know Iron Man. I could. I wanted do, to let it you know yeah, get yeah, yeah. more established. So I thought they were going to kind of go with that, but they didn't. I would love. I would absolutely love season two, 
for there to be a variant timeline <gasps> where, where Loki is Thor and Thor is Loki. Yeah. Where Chris Hemsworth is playing Loki and where Tom Hiddleston is playing they Thor. They should totally do that. That would be hilarious. That would be so fun. So, yeah. yeah. I agree. You know. See, now with the multiverse and stuff, like we've been talking, there's so much opportunity for storytelling and even like jokes and stuff. Right. Which <laughs> I think would be a lot of fun. Um, Loki we, was actually on screen for less than two hours in the MCU before this. Now that Loki came out, it more than doubled his screen, uh, his on-screen time. Are you guys got glad that Loki got more screen time? And are you looking forward to seeing even more of him? Yeah, I'm excited that we saw more of Loki. Of course. I mean, he was an interesting character, and I like where they go with him now. Kind of being a more of a good guy than anything. I mean, he's turned more into that. I don't think an anti-hero is a good th- thing to call him. I mean with that final episode, but I, I'm really excited to see where they go with this character. Now that he's in a really weird timeline and everything and how he deals with that. I think it's going to be really interesting. So dad, do you, do you think he deserved more screen time or is this just like a happy accident? I think that the Loki of the, uh, the MCU films is the perfect amount of Loki. Mm. Um, I, I was shocked just like everyone else at the beginning of infinity war, that he was killed. Mm. I questioned whether or not it was real. <laughs> everybody not, did. Everybody was going to, you know, if he was going to come back. I think that the Loki of the series, the TVA version of Loki, is a much more interesting character mm-hmm. than the Loki of the MCU films. And this, the, the, it's just wide open going forward. So. Yeah, they there's definitely a lot of development with this version of the character that's changed him from something that was very different than what we got in the rest of the MCU. Um and I'm I'm excited to see more ver- more of that version of the character because he's like you said, Nate, I think he's more of a good guy now. Yeah. And we've talked about this in our breakdown of the finale, but we all agree that he's going to be crucial in the future of the MCU. Yep. Um, this is kind of interesting going back to talking about, uh, the Dune trailer and stuff. We, we already knew that Loki took some inspiration from Mad Men and uh, Blade Runner, but we learned that Dune was actually a source of inspiration for the writers a little bit. Um, the force field shield things that were worn by the characters in Dune were actually the inspiration for the time doors. Yeah. In, um, Loki. And I looked up, uh, pictures and, and some videos of the, uh, the shields in Dune, it is very similar. It was, was kind of cool. Awesome. They had the shields in the trailer we they saw today. They did. It was kind of. But cool. they were very different. They were not like what. So they the were original in the 80s. Dune film from the right, 80s. not okay. the new one. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, they talked about like there were those like they went through 150 designs. Wow. To there were some that, cool that test ones. That's what I thought. I was like, why didn't they go with like that? The the whole diamond one. That yeah, was like, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Um. So d- d- I guess. My my question would be, I would never realized that movies or that they took so much time to create perfect effects like that. They they spent 150 like trials on one little element that nobody probably really even <laughs> right. gave a second thought about. Oh, I thought it was awesome. Oh, I agree. I gave a lot of thought about but, it. But. <laughs> Nate, what are your thoughts on that like whole process in movies? Like this really sets uh, I feel like this sets apart this show from things like Agents of Shield. I guarantee you they never did that sort of thing in Agents of Shield. Yeah, they really care about how this show is perceived by the public. I mean, you had the MCU as such a high bar and then you you get to Agents of Shield and it kind of felt like that bar was lowered a lot. Mm. It felt like a TV show, not a cinematic kind of miniseries is what I was expecting. Like Agent Carter. Agent Carter did that very well. I think that was a good one. But we go with this and the how it's basically just a long form movie cut up into parts. Mm. Like like the Snyder Cut with the 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 six parts that they had for that. It's kinda like that. Right. Um so yeah, I really think that I think that the, I feel like this the, the they've done this with all three mm-hmm. of the Disney plus MCU shows. Yes. And what they've done is treat them like major motion picture films. Yep. And budget wise, they're major motion pictures, um, writing wise, uh, ca- technology, casting. casting, all of it. Mm-hmm. It's a major motion picture. In fact, it's a, it's a six hour major motion picture or five hour major motion picture. 
and they pulled out all the stops. And honestly, the only reason that they can pull that off is because of the success of the Mandalorian. The Mandalorian did the same thing. It jumped that chasm between this is the way things like this look on TV and this is the way things like this look in the theaters. And it's one of the reasons why we'd never had a Star Wars television series before this because George Lucas wouldn't let it happen. Mm. He was like, if you're going to do a TV series in Star Wars, it has to look like the films and feel like the films. So that John Favreau and Dave Filoni came in there and did that with The Mandalorian. They showed it can work. They found a way to make the technology work. And then Marvel... You know, took the success of this franchise that is the most popular, you know, film franchise of all time. And I'm yeah. a Star Wars geek. Oh, I agree. Um, and they said, let's do that with, with these shows. Three times. And so, so it, it's super exciting. It's so exciting for, for TV. Yeah, absolutely. Cause it's completely changed the way TV, it's no longer you only have to go to theaters to get that quality of content. It's, from the comfort of your own home every week. And I appreciate that they're doing it in a weekly release too, because of course it, yes, it really things like stranger things and stuff. You just digest it all in one bunch. You don't ever really get to savor it, but with shows like this, you really get to appreciate the show. Um, and then they talked a little bit more about Sylvie in, in this, which was obviously a new character. Um, there was a female variant version that existed in the comics, like kind of what we saw here, um, but our version is more of a mix between Sylvie Lushton, who uh, was Chant- given... Chantress, right. Well, not quite, actually. She was given powers by Loki and basically became his apprentice for a bit. And then there's the Enchantress who was... Uh, I forget her actual name, but she was actually like his guardian okay. sorcerer or okay. something. But it was very much a mix between the, the Learned two. Learned something. Mm-hmm. Um, the director, Kate Heron, says that she's a lot more in line with um, Enchantress, but also a complete reimagining. So... They basically took a bunch of stuff from different characters and mashed it all together to give us the Sylvie we have now. Going through the series, now that we've finished the whole thing, what do you guys think about the character of Sylvie? Do you like her? Do you not like her? Yeah, I I mean, I don't like her because she is stupid. She's (laughs) dumb. (laughs) <laughs> she gave us the multiverse, though. As far as like you know, the, that, the in character world, in yes, world, she's stupid for what in she world, did. She's okay. stupid what she for for what she did. I don't like that, but she did give us the multiverse, so I'm okay with that. Um, but I really think that her character, for what we saw, was great with the character growth and everything, and I I, I enjoy her character. I think Sylvie is the Star Lord of this series. Star Lord, okay. Star Lord from Infinity War, so you know. No, he she, she he let he his he, up. he let his emotions get the best of him, and his emotions messed it all yeah, up with Thanos. Yeah, yeah. Did it work out? It worked out, but that's exactly what he happened. I'm not saying it in a negative way. I love that storyline, okay. But he messed it all up because he let his emotions get the best of him. It, if Star Lord didn't do that. They wouldn't have won. Do people understand this? I'm mm. not arguing that. I'm <laughs> saying Star-Lord let his emotions get the best of him. And he did. Yes. He messed it all up. He did. Yeah. It all worked out. Okay. That's the end of the story. It's the same thing in this one. L- L- Sylvie let her emotions get the best of her. That's why she... But did- it was actually like the reverse. It wasn't her quote unquote love for Loki. No, it was hate. It was her mission. Yeah. It was hate. Yeah. It was hate that caused mm-hmm. it was it was fear. It was dark side stuff, man. It was fear. It was anger. It was aggression. It was all of that. And she let all of that overcome when Loki was speaking reason and truth to her. And she rejected that reason and truth and messed it all up, just like Star Lord did. Yep. Yet so we'll see. I'm sure Loki and Mobius will fix everything. And maybe there's a love story, you know. Maybe Loki and Sylvie will that's so weird. It's still I can't, weird to me. I can't can't do that. All right. Anyway, let's go. Let's Aside, keep like, uh, no, I saw something on Facebook the other day comparing the moment when um, Wanda turns into Scarlet Witch to when the cross um, threshold. Yeah, when he who remains says he crosses the threshold and he no longer knows what happens. Do you think those moments 
happened at the same time, and that's why he didn't know what was happening. Well, because she's is, a Nexus being, right? If you go to Disney Plus right now and you you search, you find the chronological order of the MCU. You find Loki takes place just before Wandavision, so the end of Loki and the end of Wandavision could actually uh, parallel over each other. Ooh. And that can was- we address the fact that Far From Home takes place after Wandavision? So. The multiverse isn't known in the sacred timeline at that point. What do you mean? Explain a little bit for Far From Home takes place after one. Oh, Far From Home. About a year. So Uh. the multiverse isn't known in the sacred timeline, or at least the timeline that we have the MCU in at that point. That's a good point. Wow. Good insight. I'm I'm not sure how they're going to put it all together. There's that Nate bomb. Um, And then they talked about Richard E. Grant and (laughs) the creators of the show and even Tom Hiddleston only imagined the role of classic Loki as being played by Richard E. Grant. Even the concept art was drawn with his face as it. Did you guys like Richard's portrayal of the character? Could you see anybody else doing the character at this point? Well, no. I mean, he owned the character so much that there's no way you can ever, you'll ever imagine anybody else playing that character. But that's no different than we'll never imagine anybody else playing the regular Loki or anybody else playing Captain America. You, I mean, I've seen, that's fair. I've seen images of them putting Tom Cruise in the Iron Man suit. And so uh, I'm mm. like, that. exactly, exactly. You can't, it's that way. <laughs> Richard E. Grant is a gem and he needs to be in more stuff. Yeah, um, I agree. Uh, you know, ju- uh, just a little bit. We got him in star Wars was great. I love seeing him in this. I hope that he's not dead. I hope I they bring him you, back. You cast that character or him for that character without bringing him back. Yeah, so no. I'm hoping so. I thought he was great. Yeah, I loved Richard E. Grant as classic Loki. And I loved how he just owned it. I mean, that suit is God awful, but he loved it and he loved doing all of it. I thought it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. And it reminds me of Will Smith's character in Men in Black when he puts on the black suit, the same thing that uh, that Tommy Lee Jones is playing, you know, the famous suit right? Yeah. in the glasses. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, the difference between you and me is I make, I make this, this look, look good. good. Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's that same thing with uh, with uh, the, he acted that character so well that he made the costume look right. Yeah, the look good. yellow undies on the outside. Yeah. yeah. Um, and Apparently, the uh, the VFX department worked really hard to make Alligator Loki feel realistic, but still have that Loki charm. They were talking how they gave him, like, handsome and beautiful eyes um, and that cheeky Loki grin or mischievous look. Uh, and apparently, Alligator I think Physics... it's pronounced mischievous. 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 Whatever. It all works. You know what I was meaning. Dad moment. Um, mischievous. And apparently, Alligator Physics are difficult. So, to ensure that the uh, alligator Loki moved and behaved correctly, they modeled his movements off of a real-life support alligator named Wally. Nate, you really like this character, as you tend to do with these sorts of of characters. What were your thoughts on all of that? I thought that was was the best part of Assembled. Well, behind the whole Mobius and Owen Wilson stuff, I thought that was great. But uh, I loved the blue The little blue stand-in? That was awesome because they were just throwing it at people. Yeah, it they was, threw it at uh, <laughs> President Loki's hand. And he just, just grabbed it. It was fantastic. I loved it. But I thought that how they took care into this character that we probably won't see again. But I do hope we do see it again. You know, I hope Alligator Loki, like, saves the timeline. You tend to eat, like, porgs? Yeah, like, Is porgs. Is that where you're going with yeah. this? Yeah, let's just... Let's just he Let, bites the right. He eats the right neighbor's cat, and it puts everything back. It's like it's like King the up. Conqueror's cat, and it and like <laughs> and so Ken gets sad, and he doesn't go. And do, yeah, do anything he doesn't else. do anything. Okay. So yeah, he then go. becomes a, like a rescue mm. um, owner um, for classic Loki, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so then there was a little bit about Owen Wilson, and he they were t- they were talking about him how he loved playing this character of Mobius. Um, like stating like it was cool that he didn't have any superpowers. Like he was like, my superpower is my name. I'm Mobius. Like that was his, that was his whole thing. Um, and you know, this, they talk about the stash, the stash worked on him. You mean the mustache, right? Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure. I the mustache. Right. And okay. we all, I think we all agreed that it worked for Owen. Oh, it worked. Oh, it did. Mm-hmm. It worked. Um, and <laughs> it was funny cause at the end there they were talking and Owen Wilson didn't even know what the MCU was <laughs> he before did. he signed on. Like, he, he's are like, you serious? You didn't get that? I must have fallen asleep yeah, at yeah. that point. Like, there's nothing. I was so was, tired last night. Um, uh, Tom was, was talking to him. He's like, so was it, how's it feel to be a part of the MCU? He's like, what's that? He's like, 
that's this year. Oh, well, yeah, I was. I thought they were joking. No, uh, I, no I'm pretty I, sure I, he I genuinely didn't know oh, what the okay. MCU was at the at The, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, this collection of movies. Yeah, I remember. Right, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, he was like, yeah, I mean, I was... I was they tried to hire me for okay, Iron no, Man. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, did you guys like Owen Wilson as Mobius? Oh, Mobius was fantastic. Oh, was, that was great. They were talking I, about how he's like that classic detective. I would do just a show of it with Mobius. Yeah, just just yeah. just Mobius reviewing jet skis. Like <laughs> <laughs> This and one has great torque. And drinking whatever um, that We need soda one of those is. WandaVision Josta, commercials, Josta but, Josta soda or whatever. But Mobius called? is like a jet ski yes. like model or something. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Maybe well, in season two. I, yeah, yeah. I hope we get lots more of him. And the the reaction between or the reaction, the Interact, dynamic interact. between um him and and Loki, not only in the show, but it seems like even behind the scenes was a really good chemistry. Yeah. Um I hope we get a real body buddy cop feel from season two. <laughs> yeah, I, I do too. Yeah. Um it's sad to let Loki go, but the good news is is that there is a season two coming. And there is. Oh yeah, no, yeah. We're about uh, <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I can't wait to see it. And do we even know when that will be coming out? Twenty twenty-five. No, I'm three, kidding. three, twenty twenty-three. So that's at least the rumor right now. So. All right, all right. Um, it it's been sense. it's been such a fun ride. Um, and if the future of Marvel is anything like this, things are looking bright. Yeah. Nate, this story you've been telling us each week is getting really depressing. Please tell me things get a little <laughs> bit better now. No. Oh. Um. So everything kind of went wrong last week so kind of let's just see what happens this time and how batman gets out of the situation he's in because there's a lot of spoilers and i don't want to spoil all right well that's coming up after these ads specifically chosen to to distract you so that you won't go and look up how the batman who laughs really looks online don't look don't do it it's scary that this is tatooine sons all right so you guys know we do not have a patreon page Yes, yes, I do. We I'm used aware. to. Mm-hmm. I know we did. And yeah. we had, you know, a lot of you guys supported us Which on really that cool. Patreon page. Thank you and for it that. It was awesome. But about a year and a half ago, we shut that page down. Mm-hmm. And here's why. We don't necessarily need your financial support to do this podcast. We have been blessed in such a way that we're, we don't have to do that. And so... We have made the decision that we don't want to be asking you guys every single show. And I know you guys listen to podcasts and there's some amazing podcasts out there you guys support. And we love that. That's fine. Support them on Patreon. We don't want that kind of support. We don't need that kind of support. It's just not what this show is going to be about. So what we've asked is a way for you to show your support is through the things that connect to one child. So that's why we ask you to give us reviews on Podchaser because that's your way to show your love for the show. And instead of having Patreon, you give us a review there and we help support. Um, we make a donation in your honor to one child. Same thing on T public. We don't need, you know, use the, the proceeds from that, uh, you know, any purchases on T public, which is, there's honestly some really cool stuff there. Um, we don't use that for keeping this show going. We we're, we're in a position where we don't have to do that. And so we're really grateful for that. Um, so we take those proceeds and we donate those to one child. And if you're really a big fan of the show and you really want to support the show, then we're not asking you to, you know, make a huge um, decision based on this kind of an appeal. What we're asking you to do is go to the link in the show notes for One Child and learn a little bit more about One Child. I think that for most of you out there that listen to this show, you're awesome people. A couple of you aren't, but that's Cam. Um, no, I'm kidding, Cam. We love you. Um you know, you'll go. You'll, if you go on there and you see that you're going to learn about the uh, one child, you're going to want to be a part of this. Um, that's why we do what we do uh, for that for for one child, and we think that you guys will uh, will want to support. So check out the link in the in the show notes. Have you ever danced with the devil in the pale moonlight? Yeah, I can fly. I'm here to fight for truth and justice in the American way. The people in this room, which one is A, wearing a spangly outfit, and B, not a fuse? There's only one God, man, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. That man has no limits. 
saw the clip. How long was the clip? It was just a few, like a minute or so. Yeah, is it good? It was very good, very comic accurate as well. It was great. Your side, it was. It was right. Bruce talking to Carmine. Very cool. As a kid. It was you, awesome. You gotta forgive me. I don't remember when part two comes out. Next Tuesday. It, Wait, really? Tuesday. Mm, it comes out that Tuesday. That was fast. It, it, okay. It's, it's gonna be good. Um, <laughs> so, before I get started, do y'all remember what happened last week? Recap. S- can you quick, make it really I can fast? Just, I can just kind of give you what happened at the end. I'm not gonna give you a full all recap, because right, right. there was a lot. But basically, um, Batman and Gordon uh, tried to activate the last laugh protocol. Oh, yeah. My cool idea. Um, but... The Batman who laughs called Batman and made Batman lose faith in the city to the point where Batman almost had the the, the toxins almost full at full control of Batman right now. Okay, and Batman activated the last laugh protocol. That's right. I remember Alrighty. now. So, um, after call finished with Batman finishes, Batman who laughs looks for the final Bruce Wayne to kill to get a serum. So okay. that would be bad. Um, he crosses into another dimension. It's pretty cool. And sets up a sniper to kill the final Bruce Wayne, who is an elderly la- man that is about to accept an award for his service to Gotham. Does everybody know that so old Batman man? Is Batman Beyond? Sort no, of thing? no, he's not Batman. He was just like, he did acts of service. Oh, okay. 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 No, just acts of service. Um, right as Batman, who laughs, is about to pull the trigger, the elderly Bruce vanishes. Oh. <gasps> Just he's gone. Just magic. Yeah. Um, you know, okay, both of you just go crazy with this one. What do y'all think what do y'all think happened to this Bruce Wayne? Okay. Okay. Uh is this old Bruce Wayne? This is the old Bruce Wayne that disappeared. What happened to him? That vanished. Um okay, okay, okay. So it's 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 old Bruce Wayne, but he's played by Christian Bale, and it's set in the prestige universe. And what happened was he figured out how the other guy did the trick, so he recreated the trick and teleported to another area. Okay. That's one I haven't that thought of. That didn't happen. Dad, what do you... That, that's what not... Do you, I'm pretty sure that didn't happen, Sam. You don't think so? I, I'm going to I think it. it's a pretty solid that's not it. theory. I, uh, I, he's in the multiverse somehow. He's going back. He's going to bec- mentor a young Bruce Wayne... Um, Somehow, I don't know. Okay, okay, I have a serious like theory though. Okay, I think Go ahead. Batman, who's turning into Batman, who laughs, took him. Okay, there we go. So, um, that bat that Bruce Wayne was played by Christian Bale in the Prestige Universe. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but no, at this point, <laughs> at this point, the toxin has almost completely taken over Batman. But he believes that he has a way to beat the Batman who laughs, so he does pull that Bruce Aha! Wayne out. Good job. Um, right. What do you think Batman's plan to defeat Batman who laughs is? He's going to get more serum, and he's going to become an even stronger Batman who laughs. <laughs> Dad? <laughs> I got no, I got no. Okay. Antidote. Ant- <laughs> antidote. Okay. So Batman informs the Batman who laughs that he has transferred all the energy away from the dark metal in Gotham, except for the largest stash of it under Wayne Manor. So okay. this means that all the dark energy that was building up for the last laugh protocol is now building up under Wayne Manor. Interesting. So you, you we're we're following here. Okay. Sort of, yeah. Okay, we're okay. trying. Good. To. Okay, because that that could get confusing to a couple people. Um, this Not having a all a couple this, people being meaning me. Yeah. Um, yeah. This allows Batman to catch a glimpse of every single alternate Bruce Wayne in existence because he's so close to so the dark Doctor energy. Doctor Strange did. Kind of. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Um, but Batman also tells Batman who laughs that he will summon the last Bruce he needs if they meet at the manor in one hour. Who said that? Bruce Wayne, the good Batman, the okay. one that's turning. Okay. So do you think the Batman is fully given into the serum and is actually going to give the Batman who laughs the last Bruce? Nah. This some sort of no. He's got some kind some of sort trick. of trap or something. Yeah, he's yeah. tricking. He's saying him. it's a tr- it's a he's trap. A, he's got trickeration going, and it's yeah. it's a it's a trickeration put together he's, by old Batman. He, or old Batman Bruce who laughs is going to walk in, and and the good Batman's going to be behind that giant penny, and he's going to squish him with the giant penny. <laughs> okay, there's a giant penny. Yeah, you don't know the giant penny. Okay. Um... <laughs> It's in the Batcave. It's like in every version yeah, of the Batcave ever. I have never Batman. noticed. You never a noticed giant the Batman giant penny. 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 Well, okay, right there with um, the dinosaur. Yeah, with the dinosaur. But uh, I'm, we're not making this up. This I swear. This isn't okay. okay. But <laughs> the Batman who laughs proceeds to the manor, not knowing how Batman can use anything against him, since any physical elf effort will make the toxin take over Batman completely. 
So basically, if Batman does anything, he's going to so become Batman. So pushing over the penny won't work. It won't work. Dang. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> the he Batman signals for the other Bruce Wayne to do it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> the Batman who laughs arrives, and a fight begins while Alfred is talking to Batman over a comm to keep him updated on his condition so that he doesn't push it too hard. All right. All right. Um, with little time left for Batman, the Batman who laughs lets him on the key to their happiness, the Bruce Wayne's happiness. He explains that every version he has pulled has been happy because they have compromised on their ideals to achieve their goals. So, yeah. But this Uh, Bruce Wayne didn't do that, did he? So Batman laughs, thinks that Batman can't find a single happy Bruce Wayne because he is uncompromising on any ideals. So do you guys think that Batman should compromise his ideals to defeat Batman who laughs? No. So he's trying to get the old Bruce Wayne to chant to compromise. His old ideas? Bruce Wayne is nowhere now. He was just pulled out so he didn't get shot by a sniper. Oh, I thought I thought he no, was there. no, he's good. No, no, so no, no old Bruce Wayne's he's there. All right. he's, he's fine. Chilling, probably. But do you, so, but this Batman who la- the one that's turning into the Batman who laughs right now mm-hmm. has he compromised? No, no, that's what, that's he's, what saying. he's saying. That's he why he's not happy. He can't find a happy Bruce Wayne. Batman can't find a happy Bruce Wayne to defeat Batman Who Laughs because he can't compromise on his ideals. Okay. Wait, you explained this to me before, and it didn't make sense. And it's not making sense now either. <laughs> All right, hold on. Let me let me <laughs> totally let me think about okay, this. Okay. So 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 mm-mm. good Bruce. Yes. He's trying to defeat. Batman who laughs by yes. bringing in a happy Bruce. Yes. He's not able to bring in a happy bo- Bruce. Because he can't find one. Because he's not he realized compromise. what he's looking for. Exactly. Uh, Is it making sense now? No. But okay. Okay. Well, um, do you think Batman should compromise his ideal? No. No. no? That's what okay. makes Batman Batman. So Batman responds by saying he knows one happy Bruce Wayne before pulling a child version oh, of Bruce before Wayne Thomas and into Martha this dimension. Were killed. Oh a Bruce my Wayne before gosh. Thomas died. This calls back to the beginning of the comic where we see Bruce Wayne, this good Bruce Wayne, running in a field with his parents kind of swinging him, and he pulls that Bruce Wayne That's out horrible. of that dimension because that is a truly happy Bruce Wayne. Um, Batman tells the kid to run away as he fights Batman who laughs because the kid thinks that they're just playing a game because I don't know. He's naive and stupid. He's naive and stupid. they're little kids. And so Batman is like, run away while I fight the monster because, I mean, Batman who laughs looks yeah. creepy. As yes, been, he as, does. <laughs> as you've been describing. So Batman who laughs explains that he came to this Earth, Earth Prime, which just want to make sure you guys know that, in search of the happiest Bruce Wayne. And he actually found it in Batman because he's the most evolved of all of them. So the happiest Bruce Wayne is actually the Batman who did not compromise. That was just a Batman who laughs trying to, ah, to play a little, with little Batman. dark side talk. It was. Mm. But since Batman was fighting off Batman who laughs to not get the kid Bruce Wayne, he exerted himself a little too much. No. And as soon as the transition of Batman who laughs is complete, the Batman who laughs sticks a syringe into Batman to pull out the dark matter no. for the final serum. So Batman who laughs practically won no. at this point. No. But bad guy. next time is the final time we will talk about this series. What do you think is going to happen? Because next one's going to be a long one. <laughs> I have no clue. I have no clue. I just want to say one thing. This is very different than the uh, animated show. <laughs> they went way off the rails. What are you like talking about? Time travel, different dimensions, dark energy, metal stuff. It used to just be Batman doing detective work, and now he's but fighting an interdimensional. Cool, okay? It's definitely oh, it, different. It's yeah, cool, it is, it's but cool. It's, it's different. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, well, yeah. that was exciting yeah. and depressing at the same time. Yeah, but, a little bit. Um, but just a tad. You guys are going to have to wait a little while to get the next the ending because next week I'm going to be talking about Batman and the Long Halloween Part 2 hopefully oh, that's leaving us cool. on a cliffhanger yeah. you jerk awesome have well, fun anything mm-hmm. that's cool awesome yeah. good job anything else you guys want to talk about anything else yeah so a Marvel executive confirms that both Hawkeye and Miss Marvel will premiere on Disney Plus this year 2021 yes wow I'm gonna be busy you're gonna be very busy <laughs> That's Maybe I'll cool. take up one of those series. You might have I might to. not have anything to talk about. But um, Michael B. Jordan reportedly producing and maybe starring in a Superman project for HBO Max. 
Yeah. How are you feeling and about that, BB Nate? Fine. I mean, if they go with Val Zod and not Kal-El, I understand that they the multiverse is anything, but it feels weird putting Michael P. Jordan in the role of Kal-El. I think it, and Val Zod is such a fantastic character in the Earth 2 World's End series and now in Infinite Frontier. I think that it would just be a if, good decision to make If it they do Val Zod, they could bring it into the yeah. our larger story. They could. They That's could. That's cool. That's awesome. Vivian Alira Blair. Um, she's been in a couple of other things. I can't remember what they are right now. But anyway, um, has been cast as a young Leia in Kenobi, and according to sources, is expected to play a large part in the series. And also, uh, what's the name of the guy from Fast and Furious that's going to be in there playing the fifth brother? Uh, I don't remember. Yeah, the, I don't remember the main guy, what's his character's name? Hans. Hans. He's playing the uh, fifth brother. In, um, Star Wars, uh, in, yeah, in Kenobi. So that'll be, <laughs> that'll be fun. And then there was another one that, who was it? I just heard I about. Don't remember. They were teasing that could be in the series. Oh, there's a rumor by generally reputable rumor people, not this isn't Mike Zero, we got this covered, stating that a, um, Agent Callus in his prime is going to be in this Ooh. as a, as a villain. Cause it's, yeah, of course. Frame, right. So. Yeah. That'd be fun. That mm. would be pretty awesome. Well, cool. Well, thanks you guys for listening to uh, Tatooine Sons, a pop culture podcast. Yeah. If you had a good time listening, please, it would be amazing if you could share this with your friends and tell them to review because we need moral support. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, this show, it's only a small part of the Tatooine Sons world. So make sure to like us on Facebook, join the discussion group, and follow us on Twitter to get in on all the action. Yeah, and don't forget to follow us the show on um, your favorite podcast app so that you don't miss an episode. So it'll like pop up, it'll give you a notification every Friday evening, and say, hey, there's a new show. And you can Ding. like set a reminder on your calendar to remind you to listen to it sometime after the weekend, because you probably don't want to listen to it on the weekend. But that's cool. Uh, and, and then if you can remind her to drop us a review on Podchaser, we'll make a donation in your honor to help a child living in extreme poverty through one child. So, um, um, next week, BB Nate, you got Batman the Long Halloween? I do. Part two? Yep. You excited? I'm very. All right, cool. I'm just wanting to know the runtime more than anything. Shmoo, what are you going to talk about next week? I have no idea. We should do some Lord of the Rings or probably. something. Probably. Yeah. That would probably be good. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'll talk about Bad Batch. Yes, sir. And we're going to have a lot of fun with that. And I'll probably get more sleep the next time and I won't be grumpy. So Let's hope. Uh, let's hope so. Anything else you guys like to say? May the force be with you. May the force be with you. May the force be with you. Always. This party's over. I like that Wookiee. Don't get technical with me. Join, please. Yep, yep.